Hi everyone, how's everybody doing? Thanks for joining me, welcome back. So this video is gonna to be totally different. It's not gonna be beauty related. I did bring up a situation on my live stream and mentioned about since Halloween was coming up, maybe I'd share some of my paranormal experiences. So if you're somebody that's interested in the paranormal or you're just curious and wanna hear, keep on watching. Before I begin, if you're not into um, anything of the paranormal and you just want to click out, that's fine. I understand. I'm not going to be upset or offended, you know, because I know some people just, well, my channel basically is mostly of beauty, but I thought since being Halloween and I did ask on my live feed and had quite a few people say, yes, yes, they wanted to um, hear some of the paranormal experiences and just, you know, hear me talk about it. And uh, so if you guys don't want to, that's fine. You can click out. I appreciate you stopping by. And I will have a video up here within the next couple of days, uh, beauty related. So stay tuned for that. But I do appreciate you guys when you come and join me. Get yourself something to eat, maybe drink. I'm not gonna make this a real long video or anything like that, or try not to. I always say that and then I end up gabbing forever. All right, so let me begin with. My first experience, to make it short, um, I had an experience when my brother-in-law had passed away. It was my first time experiencing anything that I can remember and that always stood out to me. And I was 17. I was going to be graduating from high school. It was at the end of January and my brother-in-law was killed in a car accident. And I was laying in bed and this is prior before I even knew that he was killed in a car accident. I felt the sensation on my back, like somebody was trying to shake me or wake me up. And the feeling was so real and so there, uh, it did wake me up. I jolted and jumped up. You know how when somebody wakes you up, you're like, uh-huh, you know, I turn around and nothing was there. And it creeped me out really bad. I mean, it really, really creeped me out because I was like, well, what the heck? I know what I felt. I finally get back to sleep and then I was awoken again to hear my mom in terror, screaming horribly, and went running, and that's when I found out my brother had passed away. Uh, he got killed in a car accident. Often I've wondered when I go back to it, I think was, you know, was that him, you know, going by as, as he was leaving his body and, you know, just going by and giving me that little comfort or something. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. You know, when I'm talking about paranormal, I don't know. I can't explain certain things. I am somebody who will sit there and really try to logically figure out a reason of why something happened the way it did. And no matter, sometimes if I can, sometimes I can come to a conclusion, like that's probably what it was. But then there's been quite a few times where it's like, I can't figure it out. Like, how would that have happened or, you know, I just, some things I just can't explain. Later in life, I got into the paranormal. I started watching uh, ghost hunters and ghost adventures. I even have this book here, Zach Bagan's um, I Am Haunted book. I haven't fully gotten to finish it. I don't have his other book. I want to get that one too. I know there's probably, there's some people out there you know, obviously that don't believe in that, or some people are a little skeptical, or some are just in between, you know, there's, there's all kinds, and I'm not sitting here to make you believe anything, you know, like there's paranormal out there, I wouldn't sit there and say, you know, I want to, I want to fully make you believe, it's just what I've experienced and what I believe, and I do question now in my experiences of what I've had, I just feel there's that possibility. And mind you, I did go to Catholic school. I was brought up Catholic, you know, and everything. But just, I can't help myself because of what I've experienced. And that's just the best way I can tell you. I'm going to tell you a few different episodes that I have had. I just noticed as I've gotten older, I've had more experiences or the places I've been to, I've had more experiences. Let's just put it that way. I lived in an old house, a Victorian house. Never, I probably had like one thing, maybe two things that happened. Just prior to my dad, my dad passing away, 
and I had an incident with him. So like, you know, it's not necessarily has to be an old house that something's going to happen. You know, when I left the kid's father, there was a single uh, mom trying to raise two kids. So I lived in this one apartment that you would think, because it was a little bit creepy, but I didn't have anything. I having to move out of there though, because the roof was going to collapse. So I ended up having to move into a government, like a government, one of them government homes and, or complex place or whatever. Mine was, uh, looked like a house, like a duplex house. So I lived on one half and then somebody lived on the other half, but the whole area was of, you know, houses together. Like if you ever see the apartments to house together, that's what it was. Honestly, when I think about it now, cause I had to really think hard on this. Um, okay. The kid's father, uh, he died of an accidental drug overdose. And I cannot explain this, that the one night he had had, he had taken him around 4th of July and I was so nervous. I was like very nervous, very fidgety. And I'm not, I wasn't usually always like that. Now, mind you, in the process, I was going to go for full custody because I knew, I started finding out he was getting into drugs pretty heavily and I wanted to if the kids were going to have visitation, I wanted it to be supervised. So I was in the process of that. And, uh, and you know, if anybody has gone through all that kind of stuff, they probably understand me. I was real fidgety and I just, I was on the edge and I just couldn't get myself settled. I'm sitting downstairs and right above me where my bedroom was at, of all places, I heard these noises and I heard like, it sounded like shuffling or footsteps or I don't know. It just, it sounded like literally there was somebody up there. Well, since I was in the area I was at, which I was always one of the people made sure, made sure everything was locked, but I still had in my head, like it sounded like somebody was up there. It was so realistic. Like I was hearing the sounds of somebody like sound like they were shuffling around up there and moving around that I uh, called a, pol a policeman he went up and looked all around, nothing, didn't find anything. I you know, went to bed next day. That's when I found out that their dad had passed away uh, from an accidental drug overdose. I noticed in that apartment, for me, I think it was the most creepy, the most active place I've ever experienced, ever, to this day. Like, I do experience some stuff here, but there's a different feeling here. And I hear people say, that they sense something's not so nice. That's what I felt like in that apartment. I can't, it was just like there was something not nice or just something there. It's just real windy out right now. So. In 2005, I was with Pete, like kind of dating Pete and everything, my husband who I'm with now. And I believe Pete came, he's from England, most of y'all don't know. He came here on uh, one of his first, I think it was his first visit. And he was always like, wow, you know, it's like, here we get the thunderstorms extreme. In England, they don't really get them. Like he was like, couldn't believe how intense they could get here with the lightning bolt and the strong thunders and, you know, the lightning and everything. While we were in bed, lightning hit one of the, one of the fuse boxes or whatever that's on the posts outside. It hit just you know, boom, everything was pitch dark, pitch black. And I heard my daughter, she got scared. She is almost like me when it storms. I am somebody that gets a little whatever with storms. My son, he's in the room. He could sleep through. <laughs> I swear that kid could sleep through anything. Or I don't know about now, but back then he could. And we just, we decided we we're going to get downstairs. I turn the flashlight on and just wait till the storm brewed over. I get to the top of the steps and I was like, <gasps> cause like, when I looked down to the steps, I seen this shadow of a man standing at the bottom of my steps. And I freaked so bad because I thought, oh my God, somebody's in my, in my apartment. And I still get chills when I think about that. But I literally thought somebody was in my apartment. And it was like, then they were gone. Now, I didn't know much about shadow figures. My interpretation of, like, my thought was when people would say they saw a spirit or ghost, I was thinking like how I am right now, but like you could see right through. I never knew much about the shadow thing until like when I started watching these, you know, some of the shows. Me and Pete go downstairs and I'm going through all the rooms, I'm looking around. 
nothing like and I like again you know like I'm I was somebody that was spot on locking windows doors everything like I don't care if it's daylight like it is right now the doors are locked the windows are locked you know like you just never know now in these days all I know is I can remember it was almost like you know how somebody's like leaning on the on the banister part and like just like waiting for you to come downstairs like you know that's what it was like that's what the I mean it was and it was and I know as a guy I could just tell the outline of them and and that's what's crazy it was a, I, I could tell that part it was a man it wasn't a woman it was a man I just didn't know how to comprehend that in my head it just seemed like all this active stuff kept happening there Another moment that I had there was uh, Pete wasn't around at this time. He was back home in England because he came here a couple of different times before we got settled and got married and everything. I think I went to bed kind of a little bit late, you know, as I do. I'm a night owl, as most of y'all know, maybe those who know me. <laughs> and I got into bed and started getting into that sleep, you know, where I started getting to the good sleep when all of a sudden, I heard the steps and those steps wooden steps with the rubber whatever they put on the on the, on the steps there when I'm talking walking I'm not talking about one creek two creek three creek I'm talking like somebody literally coming up the steps and I remember you know like I laid there in bed and I was frozen like literally frozen could not move and I was petrified because I thought, I can't, you know, like it, it always came down to the first thing, somebody's in my house. Finally, I got the nerve to just bolt out of bed, run, run around the corner, which what, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, well, if, 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 if there was somebody, what was I going to do, you know, but I think it was just at the same token inside of me, I felt like somebody could be in my house. And there was also that part of me thinking, I know what this is. Nothing. Went around the house, apartment, everything. I always did that, you know, like go downstairs, go look all around, nothing. But I know what I heard. It wasn't, like I said, if it, I know houses can make creaks and sounds and stuff like that. You know, I, I do know that. And like, cause like I said, my thought process for some stuff, you know, I have, as they call it, debunked a few things, but that, I mean like that I knew it was like somebody coming up the steps sound. And like I said, it wasn't just one or two or three. It was like, like it started halfway on my set. And I had a lot of steps. It was just crazy to me. I couldn't figure it out. I always said that place there was probably my most active place I've ever lived. Um, I have had quite a few things happen here in this house, but I don't have that same feeling here. I don't feel that scary. I mean, like it's, it's a little creepy, but not the same as that apartment. It just, I can't explain it. And two more things. And then this will be it. Do you believe that spirits can come into your dreams? I do now. I really believe they can come in your dreams. What I do is because both incidences were exactly the same, but two different people. In, in a sense, exactly the same. The first one, but every dream I would have of my father, it was like in the dream, it wasn't really him. Like, do you ever have them dreams where it's supposed to be somebody, but it's not really them or it doesn't look like them? That's what I kept having. And I would get upset because it was, you know, I'm missing him. I just felt like I wanted to see him until one day, and both were here when I was here. I was in my old house, my old Victorian house, there was no furniture except one and it was the TV and the TV was like lit on. So it was pitch dark in the house, but for except that the TV light and it was like no furniture. It's really weird. And I look over and there's my dad to the one corner for me and it was him. It was, it was him. It was him with the clothes that he always wore, everything. He didn't say too much, but I remember I went up to him and I said, oh my God, dad, I miss you. I gave him a big hug and just felt so good. Cause I remember when I woke up, it was just this awesome feeling I had. I cannot explain it. I haven't had anything since like that of him, especially, but that's what I had. The next one 
um, crazy enough, was my brother-in-law. When I think about it, when they both passed away, they kind of whatever with me and two important men that were in my life. I mean, my brother-in-law, I was about eight when my sister and him got together and I was 17 when he passed, you know, died. So I, he, he was like another big brother to me. It's ironically crazy. It's in my old house. Like we moved, um, when I was in my early twenties, we moved to another house, moved here in this town. And so it was in that house and it was dark. That was the crazy part too. The room we were in and the area that we were in, it was dark, but then a doorway to, it looked like the kitchen. It was like the kitchen light was on and there was my sister and there was my two nieces. The only thing my nieces were of the age they are now, they were a little bit younger, but there was my sister, my nieces. It was my brother-in-law Rick. And the only crazy thing is, is his hair was exactly like how we, he would probably have it now, like with the gray, like salt and pepper kind of hair. So oh my God, Rick, Rick, we've missed you. We've missed you. And what are you doing here? That's what it was. I said, what are you doing here? And he said, I'm here to keep an eye on my girls. And it was crazy because my sister was going through a, a divorce then. And I, I don't know, but both I found interesting dark room, but there was some light from something. I, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's very possible. And I, I do think they can come into your dream. And it just was very, it was, it was nice. I know it's a huge reason why now I, I would like to go on an investigation. Okay. So thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate that. And like I said, I'll have something beauty related coming up in the next video. I had fun doing this. I had fun sharing with you guys and I thought it'd be a nice video for Halloween, you know, just sit down and hear some paranormal experiences. And for those who do get into that and like that and do believe in it or wonder or fascinated or anything. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That helped me out so much and I very much appreciate it. Also, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit the bell so that way you can uh, be notified for my new videos being uploaded and ready to watch. You'll get it by email. And as always, please remember just to be yourself, love yourself, and let the real beauty shine through. So until the next time, you guys take care. I will see you then. I love you guys. Mwah. Happy Halloween. Bye.